Hey, what's going on, everybody? Chris with CT Golf Reviews here. We are at Fairchild Wheeler Golf Course here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm going to be doing the flat course today, so let's get out and play. Fairchild Wheeler, otherwise known as the Wheel. A property consisting of two 18-hole golf courses, the red course and the black course, which is featured in this video. It's located on the border of Fairfield and Bridgeport and right next to Sacred Heart University. It's one of the only courses I think I've ever played where you can hit a ball from one city and have it land in another city. The black course features 6,559 yards of amazing golf from the championship tees for a par 71. The course rating is a 71.5 and the slope is 123. The black course has beautiful winding hills, amazing scenic views, and delivers a challenge with brand new fairway and green side bunkers. I had a blast on this course. I can say right now, I played an amazing round and almost got a hole in one. So I've actually been trying to get out and play this course. Fun fact, I was supposed to do it in season one and something came up and I wasn't able to. I, I, I think I had like a birthday party I had to perform at that day. But either way, I'm here. I'm excited about the round and uh, I might be doing both courses today. So this is one of those where it's got two courses. It's got the red course and the black course. I'm on the black course right now and I actually, like a moron, I picked the wrong scorecard. Uh, I'll figure it out. Uh, and and also, like a moron, I forgot the mount thing that goes on top of my tripod. So now I gotta improvise. So today's gonna be interesting as far as tech stuff goes. I can deal with that. Oh. We got a blind hole right here. I don't even know where to aim. The college right here is doing an event. So that's the music you're gonna hear in the background. And they didn't hire me, those bastards. Oh, that's looking good. That's near the green. Okay, huge mistake for getting my tripod mount, dude. It's making it so difficult to film this course. I will say though, it's, it's, it's fairly good so far. I'm three over. I, a guy was actually nice enough to give me his scorecard too, which which is cool. Uh, apparently, this place has two 18-hole courses, and I might be playing both today. So, cool. I'm all right with that. That's on the green. Downhill par three. 
last time I was at one of these on camera, I was that close away from a hole in one. That close. Could I do it again? Probably not. Let's see, I'm right there. Yeah. 56. I'll even use my wedge to put it in. That's a par. That's a freaking par. That's right, Rackstar. Is that too much, you think? Wait, don't read it. Oh, you bastard. I mean, I'm not playing my worst today, but I'm not playing my best. It is a pretty difficult course, a little challenging. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's it's hard, like, oh my god, it's crazy hard. Because uh, I've definitely played courses that are harder than this. And uh, I, I guess, you know, you could you could say that the difficulty is about medium. Uh, depend, again, depends on who you are. Uh, I really like the first half of the course of, of here on the black course. I'm just about to go off on the uh, back nine of the back course, and I'll admit something. I wasn't really impressed with the scenery until I got back here. I mean, like, look at this. That's insane. And all the way up there, like that right there, that's Long Island Sound. You can see New York from here. And this kind of reminds me of how H. Smith Richardson is up the street, which I haven't reviewed yet, but I want to. So I, I like it so far. Maybe putting it wasn't a bad idea. If I'm not mistaken, if the ball was to land where the ropes are, I guess you can like pick it up, but it's in the sand, so yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, leaving a tiny little piece of equipment for my tripod at home has made filming this video ridiculous. Uh, so that's why I'm not getting the best shots that I could, because I, I got to try to balance my phone on my tripod. Doable. I can work with that. Go on the green. Oh, 
Holy sh**. Me either. I got it on camera. That's all I care about. And your undisputed winner for the most unnecessarily long tee box is hole 17. Well, I knew it was going to happen one day. My first hole in one. Denied. Denied by the flag stick. And I wasn't even filming it. I was actually, I was making a phone call and forgot to put my camera on the tripod so I can film. And guys, I'm going to show you that I'm not lying, okay? There, the, the abnormally long uh, tee box in the air. Look at, look at this. Look at that. Do you see that? That right there was the mark from my ball. And it bounced off of this damn flag stick. And it went like right there. I did birdie it. I did birdie it. And the guys in front of me can vouch that it went in. But the flag stick had to play heel. The flag stick had to say, you know what, Chris? You know what, Chris? I like you. I really do. But not today, buddy. Not today. I know you've been going through a lot, but not today. Not today. That flag stick decided to say that to me. If it wasn't for that flag stick, I would have gotten my first hole in one. But no. No. I want to cry. I want to cry. Not today. <sighs> It will happen one day. And when I do, when I do it, I'll be on camera. But guys, this is the last hole. This is hole 18 on the black course at Fairchild Wheeler. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Make sure that you favorite this video and send it to anyone you know. If you ever played this course, what was the closest you ever got to a hole in one? Not today. Let's tee off. Let's end this. And just like that, that wraps it up for the black horse here at Fairchild Wheeler. Still mad about that hole in one. Would have been. Let's get back to the house and do the final review. All right, guys, let's get into the review for Fairchild Wheeler's black course. I had a blast playing there. I actually played a pretty decent round, too, I have to say. It wasn't as uh, gruesome as I thought it was going to be because I, I was under the impression that the black course was a little bit harder than the red course, uh, which it is on paper, but I don't know. To me, I just I wasn't having that many problems. I, I had a couple of bad shots. I had a couple of good shots. 17, I almost got a hole-in-one. Well, I did get a hole-in-one, but the hole decided to say, you know what, dude, not today. And... Knocked my ball out of the damn hole. But that's okay. You know what? That's okay. That just means that I'm destined. I, I'm destined. This is the second video in a row where I have gotten within a foot of a hole in one. It's going to happen, guys. One way or the other. Right off the bat, I, I want to say thank you to Steve, who is the pro down at Fairchild Wheeler. He's the one that I emailed. I actually called ahead of time and I was like, hey, look, I, I, I do golf course reviews. Uh, this is what I want to do. I want to play, you know, both courses in, in one day if possible. When can we make it happen? We made it happen. I played. I'm here. So we're going to get into uh, the staff right off the bat. The staff is going to get a seven. Everybody that I talked to, with the exception of the starter, because I have no idea what his problem was, uh, were really cool. The, the, um, Steve was obviously the guy who brought me in. The cool dude showed me around the, the pro shop showed me the simulator that they have which I, I actually thought that was really cool because you would never know it was there it looked like a storage closet and you open it up and there's this golf simulator right there so awesome awesome little addition there you know it's a little hidden secret he called it his baby and when he's like i want to show you my baby i'm like oh wow he must have something from augusta 
Because usually if, if a golf pro or, you know, somebody who's an avid golfer like me, uh, if you have something that's a prized possession, it's most likely going to be either tour used or from Augusta. Because it's Augusta. <clears throat> By the way, I'd love to review Augusta. That'd be amazing. I already know what the score would be. So Steph gets a 7. No complaints other than I just hopefully next time I go there, the, the starter's in a better mood. I don't know. And it was the first starter. I noticed there were two guys there. When I played the red course, uh, because obviously I did both of these in one day, when I played the red course, it was a different guy. But the first guy, I, I just, I don't know. He's the only complaint I have. The only complaint. Otherwise, everybody else was great. Everybody I ran into, into was really cool. And I gotta say, to all the rest of the golf courses out there, you guys got to get a, uh, a, a cart bike or a cart board, whatever the hell it was. It was a skateboard scooter golf cart. Unbelievable. I want one. I want one just to have for me personally. I want, if I got it on video, I wish I got it on video, but I didn't. Google it. Google it. It's like a skateboard scooter thing. Anyway, staff gets a seven. Scenery is also going to get a seven. And I, I'm going to tell you right now that the front nine does not contribute to the seven at all. It probably contributes to about 1% of it. The back of the course, the back nine, is absolutely gorgeous. Now, <clears throat> I understand with the front nine, they have the school right there. But I mean, that's there's really not much that they they have to work with there. The property is nice, don't get me wrong, but I feel like there's really nothing good to look at until you get to the 10th tee when you're looking out over the hill, and it's like, wow. All right, now, I actually had a comparison to, uh, to H. Smith Richardson, which I have not reviewed yet, but I was actually thinking of reviewing it that day if I had enough time and daylight because it's literally five minutes up the road in uh, in Fairfield, like, Easton area. But H. Smith Richardson, I believe it's on the 13th hole. Once you tee off and you go to the peak of the hill, you can literally see, like, Long Island. And to the point where you can see the, the science base that's out there, the, you know, the big, the big lab. I forget what it's called, Bronson Lab or something like that. <clears throat> you can see the big dome. And uh, that's kind of like what it was like here playing at Fairchild. When you get to the 10th tee of the black course, you look out and you can see Long Island. You can see Long Island Sound. The The picture was not doing it justice as usual, but you could see sailboats and you can see, you know, like jet skis out on the Sound. I believe at one point I saw the ferry, but absolutely gorgeous. The trees are, are a lot nicer in the back. The flowers are a lot nicer. Just the scenery, when you're on the 12th hole, it's that. It was kind of like a, a downhill, then uphill. I mean, it looked gorgeous. You could see a fairway here, a fairway here, and it's like, I didn't want to move. I really didn't want to tee off. And, you know, the hills and stuff, and just the, the, the placement of the greens and everything, and all of the fairways, and just how everything is configured, just adds to it. So... Scenery is going to get a 7. Layout of the course, I'm going to give a 6. I, I'm i going to be honest with you, because of the fact I don't like dog legs, it kind of affected it. There's also a lot of blind shots. I don't... I, it's not that I don't like blind shots. I don't feel comfortable with blind shots, and I'm going to tell you why. When you're shooting a blind shot, you have the unfortunate option of hitting somebody. Now, they do have those little bell thingies, like what Hotbrook has, where you, um, you, if you're out of view of somebody, you ring a bell. It, usually it's like a piece of metal that you hit with a hammer, and it lets the person know at the tee box that you, that they can hit, uh, safely. And, um, unfortunately, the holes, not everyone had that, and not everyone rings it. So, like, I'm hitting into these shots blind, thinking, dear God, Please don't let me knock somebody out. Please don't let me hit somebody's cart. Please don't let me hit a car because there are there's one shot where the road's there behind the green and it's a blind shot. So you got to be careful. I don't like that. I feel like if I if if if, if blind courses like blind shot on courses had that aiming post that Western Hills had that would make it a lot easier to, to deal with. At least I know I have an aiming point. Unfortunately, I don't. And I, 
that's really all I have to say about that. I personally don't feel comfortable with blind shots, knowing the fact that I hit the ball like a freaking monster. Because um, when I when I hit the ball, when I drive it, I try to kill it. Like, I'm full-on Bryson DeChambeau on that tee. I try to kill that ball. Knowing that, if it hits somebody, it's their, their day's ruined. So, <clears throat> layout's going to get a six. Otherwise, um... I like the fairways. I like the I like where the the bunkers were. Barely any water, barely any water that you have to deal with, except for like the creek that runs through the course. Otherwise, you're not dealing with water. It's more of you know just just placement, organized shots. In in, in that case, it adds to the difficulty a little bit because depending on where you hit, depending on where you're able to aim, you're either behind a tree, you're in the rough, you're in the woods, or you're dead center of the fairway. Or, in my case, you're in the hole because, you know, freaking 17, I hit the ball. I literally, I used a 7-iron. First off, I thought that was going to be way too much club, right? So I hit the ball over this little marshy area. The wind takes it. I'm looking at it going, damn, that's like right on point. That's going to land two, three inches away from the hole, maybe a little bit more. And all of a sudden, you hear this. You hear... And I'm like, that was the freaking flag stick. And then the guys that were over on the other tee box looked at, you can hear them go, oh, and I'm like, that was a hole in one. Please let that still be in. And I walk over there and it's like a foot and a half away. Now, I didn't get it on film because I was actually in the middle of booking a gig when I hit the shot. <laughs> uh, I had my Bluetooth and I was talking to somebody who wanted to book me for a birthday party. And um, yeah, I didn't get it. So, it sucks, but two times, two times it's happened. So, my overall rating for Fairchild Wheeler's Black Course is going to be a 6.9. I had a blast. I, again, certain things I would change about the course. Get some aiming points in on the blind shots. Maybe get a little bit more of the bells in there. Um, get the starter a drink. I don't, I don't know. Um, I, otherwise, I, I don't have anything bad to say. If you guys ever get the chance to play there, definitely do so. It's a lot of fun. Steve is great. Got my logo ball, by the way, so there's half a point. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, definitely hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I will talk to you guys later on the next review.